Welcome to Games Overboard. This is our first attempt at a semi-regular board game review video cast. My name is Brian. I've been playing board games ever since I was a little kid, and I've been playing all different types. And right now, I play any, with anyone from two, two or three people up to a board game group that I do on a regular basis of about 30 people. I'm CJ. I've been best friends with Brian forever, and we just love to play board games. All right. Um, our first attempt at a game, we're going to start with a small filler game. I think it's a type of game that doesn't get reviewed very often. Generally, on um, reviews like this, people do like the bigger, more epic games. Um, but we're going to start and do some smaller games so people can get, so we can get used to it, and you guys can see if you like our style. Let's do something called "Hey, That's My Fish." This is a uh, real small game. Uh, it's for two to four players, and it's recommended for eight and plus, and it takes about 20 minutes to play according to the box. It's put up by Mayfair Games. It's a very good game. We like it. That's why it's going to be one of our first ones. We haven't had it for that long, so we haven't played it that many times, but we've got a good feeling for the game, and we think it's a good, easy one to teach you guys for our first attempt as well. Um, let's take a look at what's in the box, Steve. Well, we've got some tiles and some penguins here. There are 16 penguins and a bunch of these hexagon-shaped tiles. And uh, there's four penguins of each color, one for each person. And that's it, besides, obviously, the rule book. Um, the setup of the game is fairly easy. The rules in the indie box tell you a some elaborate procedure on how they want you to flip all the tiles face down and then reflip them back to face up and then sort out the threes and the twos so they're not all near each other on the board. I think that's crap. Really, all you need to do is put all the tiles face up on the board and arrange them in roughly a square shape. Um, you're going to want to allow some space in between each tile because as you go, you're going to be removing them from the game, and if you press them right up against each other, it's really hard to get the tiles out of there without messing the game up. Um, TJ's going to be arranging a board here for us. Like I say, roughly square shape. Don't be nitpicky about it. Um, we're really not. We're more casual with our games. We don't try to stress out about little things like that, especially after we've played it a couple times and realize that the shape really doesn't dictate or change the game that much. Nor does the threes and two fish tokens being close or spread apart. The law of averages will take care of that for you. And if it's ridiculous, like all the threes in one area, feel free to change what you think will make the game more enjoyable to you, because that's really what it's all about in the end. Um, after we get a roughly game-shaped board, we're not going to use all the tiles for sake of some time and space, you're going to take your penguins. The more people that play the game, the less penguins you get. So in a four-player game, you only get to use two of your penguins. If you're playing with three people, you get to add another one. And then with only two people, you play with four penguins. All right. Four um, penguins. Four penguins. My favorite recommendation for this, I really like to play with three players. Um, I think with four players, you have to wait too long, and the board can change a lot in between the um, game time, and you really don't get that many turns. With a two-player game, I mean a four-player game, so you don't get very many penguins either. With a two-player game, you have a lot of penguins out there. It's good as a two-player game, but it gets kind of repetitive. So three is my personal recommendation for best amount of players on this. Start by putting your penguins on the board. The youngest player goes first, in this case, DJ. And you get to put your penguin on any single fish tile. You cannot place them on the twos or threes. And then you alternate back and forth putting your fish on. Let's just do three for this one, because we have a smaller board. Agreed. Until everybody has all three of their penguins out on the board. That's the setup of the game, and you're ready to play. Um, the movement and turn of the game goes as follows. Your penguin can move as far as you want it to in any one direction. They can't change directions in the middle of the move, nor can they jump over any other penguins that are going out. So it moves a lot like a rook in chess, which is a good way to describe it to people. Also, as the game goes on, you're going to find that tiles are going to be removed from the game. If the tile is gone, the penguin cannot jump over that amount of the empty space as well. After you've moved your penguin wherever you want to move it to in a legal move, you're then going to remove the tile that the penguin started on from the game. This is how the game changes and goes on. You keep this tile face down in front of you, and that's going to determine the winner at the end of the game. Um, during the course of the game, some tiles may become stranded on the board. These three tiles no penguin can get to. So what you do is you just automatically remove it from the game at that point. There's no need to keep them in there. And nobody gets them. Nobody gets them. Also during the game, you may find some penguins get stranded off by themselves. They get to stay there, and you can play them as a normal turn if you want, but my recommendation would be not to unless you absolutely have to. Because what's going to happen is near the end of the game, as the tiles are being removed, you're going to find that the penguins are going to be on the islands among themselves. 
the game actually wants you to, it states that you're supposed to keep playing until there are no longer any legal moves you can make. It just wastes time. At this point, we know exactly who's going to get what tiles. Whenever you and your friends agree on that, just take the tiles off the board and call it quits. It, it shades about five minutes off the game, so from this 20 minutes, you can pull it down to 15, which is really nice. At the end of the game, what you want to do is flip over the tiles you've accumulated in front of you and count up all the fish on them. You can have one fish, two fish, or three fish. So make sure fish you count. Blue fish? No, just one, two, or three. So make sure you count all the fish on the tiles. Uh, you take your total. The person who's got the highest total is the winner. If there happens to be a tie for the total number of fish, it's the person with the total number of actual tokens in front of them, the highest number wins. If there's a tie, the game states that it's a draw. Personally, we like rock, paper, scissors. I win. TJ wins. It doesn't happen often. Rock, paper, scissors is probably his best that. game. I'm one for three now. That is your best game. Thanks for listening. Yeah, our, our pros and cons for the game. I really like it. It's a, one, one of my reasons I like it is because it's one of the easiest games to teach everybody. Um, I've taught everything from Demacher to Power Grid to Funny Friends to Coliseum. It's a chore just teaching the game, and then you have an hour and a half odyssey in the game. Don't get me wrong, every one of those games I mentioned I really like, but it's a really refreshing change to be able to teach somebody a game in about five minutes total, if that. You can usually teach it them as you're setting up the board. I like it because there's only a few elements of strategy to it. There is some strategy, but once you've got that, there's only a couple ways you can go with it, so it's not a really big thinking game. It's a, it's a good point, which um, is actually one of my cons in it. It isn't so much that in the game there's not as much strategies, but I can really see it being a game that after you've played it, a certain number of times, you've really had that strategy nailed down, almost like tic-tac-toe where you know exactly what to do, and it might become a little bit repetitive in that sense, but I think it would take a couple hundred gameplays or so like that before it really got to that point. Alright, well that's our first episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want any more information about the rules or specifics about um, where you can get the games and stuff, I definitely recommend going to BoardGameGeek.com. Um, it's one of the best resources online or anywhere for any kind of information, whether it be variants, rules, um, questions, or where to get the games you can find online. So on behalf of me and TJ, thanks for watching. Hey, that's my fish.